Yes. Are you in? I am opening it now. Okay. All right. I just jumped in. You weren't there, and I was like, did I click on the wrong link? No, I went to the restroom, and I'm flying by the seat of my pants. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous. <laughs> it already is fabulous. Excellent. Oh, and I've got my new slide. It's going to be great. And... Okay. All right. Very good. Bye. Okay, are you in here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, perfect. Three minutes to spare. Excellent. I'm going to close this and do this. Share screen. Share screen two. All right, so you can see my Situation? Yes, I can see your situation. Excellent. Which just sounds very personal and I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with that. So please do not ever show me your situation. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, okay. I just feel like it's been so long since I've done this, this, this webinar. Well, it has. It's been a really long time. Um, okay. Oh, the minty. Oh. Oh, Lord Jesus. Good. I need to make sure that this is, this is going to open up. We the have baby. plenty of time. Every time I, the, it just remembers the baby's one. And so it always goes to which baby is <laughs> which. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. At some point, I'm going to have to do another one of those. Those are so, oh. that, they were so It was fun. fun. <laughs> Um, okay. Six, seven, eight, four, eight, two. I think that's correct. I'm just going to double check. Come on. Six. Okay, six, seven, eight, four, eight, two, nine. Excellent. Okay. All right, are you good to, oh, hold on, let me get back to the beginning. And then, are you okay if I start the webinar? Yes. Okay, I'm clicking start now. Thank you for joining the Recycle Right Nashville webinar. We're going to be starting here shortly. If you're just joining us, thank you for taking your lunchtime today to learn more about recycling right in Nashville. We'll be starting here in just a few minutes. Welcome to our Recycle Right webinar. We'll be starting here in a few minutes. Thank you for your patience. We have more people who are popping in and joining us. All right. All right, Jen, it looks like we're pretty good. We've got a solid number here. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to today's Lunch and Learn, learning how to recycle right in Nashville. My name is Sharon Smith. I'm the Assistant Director of Metro Public Works, and I'm so excited to see so many people interested in learning about what they can and cannot put in their recycling carts at home and at the recycling drop-off sites in Nashville. Learning how to recycle right uh, is super important because the uh, more good, clean recyclables we get, the more we can do to reduce the waste going into landfill. So I want to thank you again for joining us. 
The webinar today is going to be conducted by Jen Harmon, who's the Metro Public Works Waste Reduction Program Manager and has developed these materials and uh, an entire website of information to help you understand how to recycle right. Jen, you're on. Thanks, Sharon, and uh, I'll just reiterate, thanks again for all of you being here today to uh, learn about recycling. Just a couple of housekeeping notes for you before we get started. One, um, we will have a little bit of time for questions at the end. Um, also, we will be recording this presentation, so we will be able to share that with you after uh, the presentation's over. You'll get a recording. We'll also share our slides with you as well as some links to some good information of the things that we talk about today. Um, so we'll jump right in. We have a lot to go through. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for your questions at the end. So today what we're going to be talking about is, of course, recycling absolutely is important, but it's also important to do some of those higher level um, waste reduction strategies as well to reduce and reuse. So we're going to be talking about why that's important. Um, we're going to talk about why or how recycling works here in Nashville and in the southeast um, to help you better understand our program and then also talk about just how to recycle right in Nashville. What are our guidelines and, and why they're there. So why do we have recycling programs? Why should you be recycling? Um, well, first off, in Nashville, 80% of our waste is sent to a landfill. We only recycle about 12% and then we compost even less. So you can see on this uh, chart that shows how much we're collecting the green bars um, that are going up from fiscal year 17 to fiscal year 19. Um, those are all showing how much trash we're throwing away, how much we're sending to landfill, whereas the blue bars are showing how much we're recycling. And you can see over those three years, of course, um, fiscal year 20 we is not necessarily um, the full year yet, but those other years you can see how we're trending in that upwards direction of throwing away more and recycling less. And right now all that we're throwing away, 48% of that is going to a landfill that's estimated to close in about seven years. So once that landfill closes, we have to find another landfill that will be farther away. It will cost more money. There'll be more emissions to transport that trash somewhere else. And um, ultimately there's just better ways that we can manage our waste um, that uh, is more sustainable and is more beneficial for our community rather than just sending it to a landfill to be buried. So that's where the three R's come into play. Um, we've all heard reduce, reuse, recycle. Of course, the three R's have turned into many more R's than that, as you can see from our, our waste pyramid here. Um, but they always come in this order, reduce, reuse, recycle, because it's part of this um, upside down pyramid strategy, if you will, of how to manage our waste from what's most preferred for the environment to what's least preferred for the environment. So the strategies at the top, they're gonna to be the most effective at conserving our natural resources, preventing pollution, and saving energy to what's the least effective. And I think it's important to note that Absolutely, we're talking about recycling and recycling is important, but you can see that recycling is towards the bottom of this pyramid. So there's all these other strategies that we should look at and, and as, um, as residents, as a city, uh, to be finding ways to reduce our waste um, through all of these different strategies so that we're making sure we're being, um, doing it in the most sustainable way that we can. So some, some notes on these of how we can look to refuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So refuse was at that top of the pyramid, one of those newer R's, um, and that's to just refuse items that you don't need. I think right now, a lot of us are getting takeout. We're not necessarily eating in restaurants as much as we used to. Um, restaurants are using a lot of more takeout materials. And so if you're taking, getting a nice dinner and taking it home, you're not gonna need those plastic utensils. You'll probably have utensils at home. So finding ways to, to refuse those added items that you just don't really need. You probably have ketchup at home, so you might not need those ketchup packets, things like that. Um, reduce is to reduce the amount of materials and goods that you consume. And a great example of this is packaging. There's so much packaging out there um, to the point where um, it's why I put this picture up there. Sometimes that packaging is just completely unnecessary. This particular image, you've taken um, a piece of citrus, a, it's probably an orange, and you have taken it out of its natural packaging to then repackage it in man-made plastic, and that's just completely unnecessary. So finding ways to reduce those um, packaging uh, materials that you consume. And then reuse, 
By taking old items that you might consider throwing away, find a new use for them. Glass jars are a really easy one. Um, you know, there's so many uses for those, but then you can also get creative with different items as well and find ways to reuse. Um, but I also like to really hit on the idea of repair when you're thinking about reusing items. We are definitely in a throwaway culture. And, you know, when something gets old or it gets broken, the first thought is you throw it away and you get a new one. Um, but oftentimes some, a quick YouTube video or, um, you know, looking it up, uh, Googling it and finding out how you can repair an item, you can get many more uses out of that, that item rather than throwing it away. So finding ways to repair things um, rather than throwing them out. And then once again, once you've exhausted all those options, that's when we look at recycling and uh, see if that's something uh, that's an option for that material. So to better manage our waste, Metro Nashville Public Works, we adopted a zero waste master plan in 2019 that uses all of these strategies, the refuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle um, to, to go towards a goal of diverting 90% of our waste from landfill. Um, so that's a big goal, it's a long-term plan, um, and it includes a lot of different strategies and um, it includes absolutely increasing our recycling. That's a big, big part of it, an important part of it. But we've also got things in there for reducing our food waste, addressing Nashville's growing construction and demolition waste, and then of course, increasing our public education that we're doing around all of um, these strategies of reduce, reuse, recycle, which of course is what we're doing and excited to be doing today here with you all. So let's jump into really get into recycling, which is why you're all here. Um, so recycling is just the process of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away as trash and turning them into new products. So basically we're taking what is a linear process of extracting a natural resource, processing it into a raw material to be manufactured into the goods and products that we use every day. And then when we're done with those products, collecting them and throwing them into a pile where they're just buried and they then have no value, no more use to us. Instead of that linear process, really closing the loop um, and making that a circular process. Um, if you've ever heard that term of the circular economy. So taking those products, collecting them, and then remanufacturing them into other goods and products that we can continue to use and continue to get value out of is really what recycling is all about. And here in Nashville, our program through Metro, we have two collection programs. We have our curbside collection that is open to, uh, we have approximately 140,000 households that participate in that program. Um, so if you're in this um, kind of ugly green colored area, that's where we offer curbside service. Everywhere else we have um, drop-off locations. There are 10 drop-off locations and four convenience centers where you can take your recycling. Um, for drop off if you don't have that curbside service. And that gives every resident in Davidson County really the access and ability to recycle. Our curbside program is um, we provide up to three green recycling carts per eligible household and all the materials that we accept all go into that same, that one curbside cart that you have. Um, so they don't need to be separated. And for curbside recycling, we accept paper and cartons, we accept cardboard, food and drink cans, and plastic bottles, jars, and jugs. So the paper and cartons, that's things like newspaper, junk mail, even the little plastic window, that's not a problem. Um, food and beverage cartons, so like a soup carton or a milk carton. Um, the ones that have the little plastic cap on the top, that's those types of things are just fine. Um, cardboard, corrugated cardboard, cardboard boxes, um, a little bit of tape is not a problem, but make sure you flatten your cardboard. Um, cereal boxes, snack boxes, tissue boxes, um, paper towel tubes, toilet paper tubes, things like that. Um, and then for our, our metals, we accept food and drink cans only. Um, so aluminum soda cans, tin vegetable and tuna cans, um, just really just those food and drink cans for the metal that we accept. And then for plastic, this is the one I know that we get a lot of questions on and there's a lot of confusion around. Um, and we've updated this um, a little bit to just really focus on the plastic bottles, plastic jars and plastic jugs um, because we know those are being recycled and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but really for the plastic, it's just bottles, 
jars and jugs. If it's not a bottle jar or jug, then we don't accept it in our program. And again, we'll talk about why that is um, a little bit more. Um, and then for our curbside program, those are the only materials we accept. We do not accept glass in our curbside carts. So for those of you that use our recycling drop-off locations um, or convenience centers, our guidelines, they're the exact same for accepted materials with the addition that you can recycle glass at a drop-off site or a convenience center. Um, the major difference with recycling between curbside and drop-off is that drop-off locations, we do ask that you separate the materials. There are, there's very clear signage out there that tells you what bins accept what materials. And I've separated out the materials here to, to show what those categories will be. So you'll have a bin for paper and cartons, a separate bin for cardboard, a separate bin for your uh, metal and plastic containers, and then a separate bin for glass. Um, and that gla separate glass bin is really important, then that's why we, we have to keep glass separate, which is why we don't allow it in curbside bins. Again, we'll continue to talk about that a little bit more, um, but make sure when you're going to a recycling drop-off location that you do sort it into these uh, categories, but then follow all the same guidelines for those accepted materials. And then no matter whether you're recycling at the curb or recycling at drop-off, there are three main rules to recycling right. Um, and that's to make sure you're only recycling those items that we actually accept, that only recycle the things that you know we accept in our program. Um, if you're, you're confused, you're not sure, you think it might be recyclable, just leave it out. Um, just make sure that you're, you're paying attention to what you can and cannot put in, you in those recycling bins. And then also you want to make sure to rinse out your containers, make sure to remove that food or liquid residue that's in there, empty your containers, and then make sure your recycling stays dry. Uh, and lastly, everything that, should, that you put in your recycling bin should be put in there loose. Never put it in any kind of a bag, not a plastic bag or a paper bag. Make sure it's recycled completely loose. Um, that'll make sure that it gets effectively sorted at our sorting facility. So these three steps, um, these three rules to recycling right, um, not following these rules really is what leads to the top issues that we find in our recycling containers um, and that we're finding you know, more and more of. And um, so those bagged recyclables, those can't be sorted at the sorting facility. So if you bag your recyclables, no matter how good, clean, perfect recycling you have in that bag, that bag's gonna be pulled out and it's gonna be thrown into landfill. So that's something that can't, um, it can't effectively be sorted that way. So make sure you do not put anything in a bag. Um, liquid is another big issue that we have with our recycling because any kind of liquid, whether it's not emptying your containers or if you have a, um, a recycling bin where you've left the lid open and it rains inside that recycling bin, all that wet material, it, it causes the cardboard and the paper to become wet and then those items can't be recycled. Um, so that's another big problem that we have. And then also make sure that, again, stick to those basic materials that we accept. Um, we're seeing more construction debris, scrap metal, bulky items, those kinds of things. They're just not recyclable through this program. Scrap metal can be taken to our convenience centers. There's other ways to manage some of this material, but they're not recyclable in our drop-off locations or in our uh, curbside bins. So just remember to stick to the materials that we accept make sure they're clean, empty, and dry, and make sure they are recycled loose. So let's talk about why, now you know the rules, let's talk about why we have these guidelines. Um, and it really comes down to two different things. Um, and that's the sorting process and then um, selling to manufacturers, being able to sell the material. So it's the sorting facility, the sorting process, and then the economics of recycling really are the two drivers as to whether or not something can be recycled. Um, so as we talked about, the curbside recycling all goes into one curbside cart, um, all mixed in there together, and then all that material then has to be sorted out. Um, so that's where this facility comes in that you see here. This is um, just kind of a snapshot of um, our recycling facility. We contract um, with waste management to do this sorting process for us. So this is their facility. And this is where all your curbside recycling goes as well as um, a good portion of your drop-off recycling as well to be sorted so that it can be then sold to manufacturers. So we're gonna jump into a video to give you a close-up um, look at this process. 
see what it actually looks like inside the facility. Um, so the sorting process first starts, we've collected the material and then our trucks come in and there are these uh, scales where they get weighed so we can identify um, how much material we're actually sending to the facility. Um, so they're weighed on the way in and then they're weighed on the way out. Um, and then this is just the, they call this the tipping floor because they tip all of the materials onto that floor. So everything that's in those, bin, in those trucks are just dumped out to await the recycling um, sorting process. Um, and so that's what you see um, back there. They're using heavy equipment to move this material around and put it onto essentially a conveyor belt that takes it to the sorting facility. So this is that conveyor belt. So that tipping floor is a separate building off to the left and all the material comes in here at the top along a conveyor belt. Uh, that then goes to the first sorting process. There are staff members here that uh, their sole job is to pull out anything as quickly as they can, anything that can't be recycled, specifically plastic bags and bag recyclables. Um, those types of materials, as you'll see uh, more plastic bags really can um, impact the machinery, break it and cause them to have to shut down the equipment. Um, to take in and pull that those bags out. So they're trying to pull out any kind of plastic bags, bagged materials, as well as any other trash um, that just isn't a recyclable material. And then it goes to this big machinery here. You can see how plastic bags could get wrapped around that. That's the cardboard screen. So the cardboard all goes over the top and then everything else heads here where you've got more folks that are sorting out trash and non-recyclable material. And this is the paper screen. So that paper screen, all the paper goes over the top and everything else falls through. So you can see that these are our staff members now. This is just the paper that's coming out and they're pulling out anything at this point that isn't paper so that it can be bailed and shipped. So everything that's falling off that conveyor belt is that sorted paper. Next, we have our plastic and metal containers. So anything that fell through those paper screens that uh, were not sorted out with the paper, all the other material that's left comes up this conveyor belt here um, to be sorted. This piece of equipment, when you get our uh, PDF, you're not going to see this piece of equipment on that diagram because that diagram is a little bit older and this was just installed this year. And this is um, a digital sorter that uses it basically uses a sensor that's able to visually identify a certain type of plastic. And then as you'll see, it uses an airstream to then shoot that plastic material out. So it goes through that sorting process. So the material comes up, it gets shaken out. So you can see, this is a good example of all the shredded paper that doesn't get sorted effectively at the facility. And so you can see that material then gets shot out through an airstream everything else falls through. The other plastic goes up the top over here. So it's separating out that one specific type of plastic up here at the bottom. So where that's coming out, everything else you can see it comes out at the bottom to then go to the next sorting process. So that's one type of plastic. And then all the other plastic is then sorted by hand. Um, so staff are trained to visually identify what types of plastics can be recycled. And then there's an overhead magnet that will pull up any of the uh, tin cans. So those are your, your vegetable cans and then aluminum cans. There's a separate type of magnet called an eddy current that pulls all those cans out and sorts them separately. And that's it. That's between the people and the technology and, and the machinery. That's how all of our material is sorted. So you can see here, um, anything that is trash, this side on the left, this whole bay, this is all full of items that shouldn't have been um, recycled, that just are, are trash that they have to pull off the sorting line. Once it is all sorted, it, uh, they put it onto a conveyor belt to head to another. Um, so this is sorted plastic that was sorted cardboard before. So this is headed over to be baled so that it can be shipped. Um, so essentially the baling process is to um, compress it into this little cube where it's then wrapped with steel baling wire and then they can much, uh, they can more easily load it onto trucks and get as much material as possible onto those trucks to be able to ship it uh, to manufacturers. So that was 
all of those materials mixed together, our curbside process, everything that has to be sorted out. Um, for our drop-off locations, since you all, uh, if you use a drop-off location, as I mentioned, you have to separate um, some of your materials. So that helps with um, reducing the cost of recycling. It's a little bit more cost effective because the, some of that sorting process is being done at, um, at the recycling site, at the collection side. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to go through this entire process, although it will go through some of the sorting process. Um, the drop-off material doesn't necessarily have to go through the whole thing. Um, and then, so that's, the majority of the material is going to go through this facility to be sorted. The one that isn't is glass. Um, this is why we do not accept glass in our curbside carts because it does not go to this sorting facility. When glass is mixed in with other recyclables and starts to break and then you have glass shards, they can actually get stuck in the paper and cardboard fibers, which um, makes them less recyclable and it lowers their value. Um, I think it's important to remember that recyclables, they are used as a raw material to make new things. And so they are bought and sold and there is a value to them. And so we wanna make sure that we can um, keep the highest value of those materials to be sold that we can. Um, so you wanna keep glass separate so that it doesn't lower the value of that paper and cardboard. So we take it to a separate location um, that's close to the recycling facility, but it is completely separate. Those drop-off bins are dumped here and then they're loaded on, all that glass is then loaded onto trucks where it's sent to manufacturers that recycle it into um, fiberglass as well as other glass containers, um, glass bottles, jars, and things like that. We do often get the question or the assumption rather that we don't recycle glass, that it just ends up in landfill. And I can tell you, as long as you're recycling at the drop-off site, it is not going to landfill. We absolutely do recycle glass and send it to manufacturers that turn it into new products. So that was an overview of the sorting process. So before we jump into more of the economics, um, we're going to do a little pop quiz. If you haven't used Menti before, I'll give everybody a minute to pull this up. So if you go to www.menti.com and then plug in this code 67848289, it's going to pull up our quiz. So you should be able to see that code is at the top again, 6784829 at menti.com. When you get there, you're going to be asked, which items can you recycle in your curbside cart? So we're talking curbside only. So go ahead. I know there's more than two of you here. I'll give you a second to get plugged into this. Um, just also keep in mind, we're going to do a couple more of these, and then we're also going to have a little game towards the end for the opportunity to win a t-shirt. So get yourself plugged into this and, and keep it up throughout our presentation. I know we've got a few more. I'll give everybody another second. You're all doing incredibly well, by the way. This is exciting. Okay. All right, which items can you recycle in your curbside cart? All right, so I'm gonna reveal the answer. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but um, the aluminum drink can and the laundry detergent jug, those are both absolutely recyclable in our program. Plastic bags, nice job. We do not accept plastic bags. Um, the shredded paper, we do not accept. We're gonna talk about that. And glass, um, again, curbside we do not accept glass it's only accepted in our drop-off so we don't accept glass in our curbside carts okay so keep that up we're going to go back to the presentation but um, you're going to get a chance to do some more of these throughout today's program nice job on that by the way so let's talk about why um, why the bags the shredded paper um, the glass a little bit more so um, as I mentioned, the two major barriers to recycling have to do with the sorting equipment and the economics. So let's talk about the sorting equipment. Um, first off, um, the facility is, it's designed to sort very specific materials. It's designed in a certain way. Um, and so when you start adding materials in that uh, it wasn't designed to sort, it can cause a lot of problems. And more importantly, it can break the machinery. So this is a great picture. Um, this is not our facility, but it's another waste management recycling facility. And you can see how all those plastic bags have just wrapped themselves around um, that paper screen, that 
that piece of equipment that's used to sort paper. It's not used to sort um, plastic bags. Um, hoses, chains, other kind of things like that can also be a really big problem and, and cause other pieces of equipment to break or we have, they have to shut it down. But ultimately, when these things are introduced into the sorting facility, the facility and staff, they do have to shut it down to remove these items. Um, and with the plastic bags, they have to shut everything down and then they have to cut those out by hand. Um, so that, of course, takes time and it costs money. Um, so these are things that we don't accept in our program because the facility is just not designed to sort it. Um, and then also, um, again, if it just isn't sortable. So those are items that can't be sorted because they break the machinery. Some items just, it's not designed to sort. Um, you know, big uh, bulky metal items. Metal is recyclable. A lot of it's recyclable, but scrap metal is not, um, this facility is not designed to sort things like scrap metal. So those are things that have to be taken to a convenience center, taken to a different facility. Um, this particular facility is not designed to sort those materials. Um, and same with this really, really goes towards a lot of those small items, things like shredded paper. You saw that shredded paper that was all over the conveyor belts um, throughout the process, especially towards the end of the process. At that point, the paper has already been sorted and all that shredded paper has just fallen through those paper screens. It, it's not designed to sort such small pieces of paper. And so unfortunately that stuff just ends up, um, ends up in the trash at the end. So small ca caps, shredded paper, those items we do ask that you keep out of your recycling. Um, shredded paper is one that we used to recommend. You put it in a paper bag and then tape it up, staple it up, and put it through the process. But we found, unfortunately, between um, the trash com or the, the truck compactors and the equipment that's used at the facility, those bags end up ripped open and then the shredded paper falls out anyway. So we ask that you either compost it um, or just keep it out of your recycling bin. If you are interested in composting, we do have four locations where you can take compost drop off at our convenience centers, or we also offer workshops on how to compost in your backyard. So we can share more information about that as well. And then the other bar big barrier to recycling um, in terms of the sorting equipment is just again, lowering the value of recyclable material. We wanna make sure that the material that's going through isn't gonna impact other materials and, and lower their values. So that's why we don't accept glass and curbside. And then also pizza boxes. Um, pizza boxes have, um, there's been a lot of news about them lately and some studies that have shown that it might not impact the cardboard too much to have some of that grease. Um, but after talking with our contractor, that grease still can impact the paper. Um, that's a, a totally different commodity, it's a different raw material that's going to a different, potentially different manufacturer. So pizza boxes, all that grease can still then get on other things. So we just, it can lower the value of the material and so we just don't want it in, in the program. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about this economics side, um, which really it's, it's all about just being able to sell these recyclable materials. Um, ultimately, if there's not a demand from a manufacturer for a material, then we can't recycle that material. Um, so you really have to have some, somebody has to want to buy that material and use that material to turn it into something new that they can then sell. And if that's not happening, then that item's not recyclable. Um, whether it has a recycling symbol on it or not. So a great example really of this is number three through number seven plastics. Um, these plastics are just not being bought by manufacturers. Um, in our program, there are no number three through number seven plastics that are accepted. We used to accept those, some of those plastics, but we have found that they aren't actually being recycled. There are not manufacturers that are taking that product from a municipal program like ours and being able to turn them into uh, new products. So if we can't sell those materials, then we can't recycle those materials, um, which is one of the big reasons why you've seen um, some changes to our plastic um, accepted items. Um, so really that's, that's what it comes down to. If you can't sell it, it's, it's not recyclable, which um, is, is really the reason and the driver behind our guidelines on accepted materials because we want to make sure that when we tell you something can be put in your recycling cart and can be recycled that we know it's actually being recycled. 
And so this is just to give you an idea of um, our recycling and where it goes and what it's actually being turned into. These are, at, you know, these are our, some of our folks that we sell our material to and, and what that material gets turned into. Um, we do get a lot of questions about um, China and the changes that have happened with bans on, on recycling in China and if we were shipping our stuff over to China and what we're doing with it now. Um, and I will say that we are very fortunate that here in the Southeast, we do have a very robust recycling industry. And so all of our recycling actually does stay in our regional Southeast economy. So it's not necessarily and hasn't um, gone overseas. It's really stayed here in the United States and, and really in, our, in the Southeast. So um, we're really, um, fortunate for that because it's not necessarily impacted our recycling program um, in ways that you might see on in coastal areas. Um, and then just one other thing to note in terms of the manufacturing process is that not everything can be recycled infinitely. Um, you can't necessarily recycle everything over and over and over again, um, which is why, again, we look to that, um, that waste pyramid that we looked at early on, that reduce, reuse, recycle, um, because recycling isn't necessarily going to uh, be the answer for all of these different products. For example, plastic can only be recycled one or two times um, before it becomes eventually trash. Um, paper and um, cardboard has the benefit of being able to be, uh, most of it can be, or a lot of it can be composted, um, and it can be recycled a few more times, five to seven times, but um, ultimately it, there comes a point where it can't be recycled anymore. So that's important to, to know in terms of how you think about managing um, your own waste at home. And then glass and, and metal, these are things that can be recycled over and over and over again. An aluminum can can become another aluminum can. So there it's, those materials are infinitely um, recyclable. All right, we're gonna pop back to another pop quiz. So it's that same code. So if you kept that um, Menti open, you should be ready to go. Um, I'm gonna pull this back up and we're gonna pop to our Next question. So again, if you hadn't put in the code, it's at the top again, 6784829 at menti.com. So which items can you recycle in your curbside cart? So go ahead and answer at any time. Um, can you recycle a toilet paper roll tube, a cream cheese tub, a plastic peanut butter jar, a pizza box, or plastic produce container? So go ahead and pop in your answers. Which of these materials can you recycle in your curbside cart? All right. All right, getting a lot of answers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal our answers. All right, so the two that are still highlighted, the toilet paper roll tubes and the plastic peanut butter jar, those are accepted in our program. Um, but the cream cheese tub, the pizza box, and the plastic produce container are not accepted in our program. We're gonna talk about why. Again, that pizza box, we talked a little bit about um, that grease. Because of that grease, it can um, impact the value of, of paper materials and it's not clean, so we wanna keep that out. We only want good, clean uh, cardboard. So if the top of the pizza box is clean, go ahead and recycle that. Um, and then any of the greasy parts you just keep out. So, Nice job on this one. We're gonna talk about these cream cheese tubs, the plastic produce container. Why are these things not recyclable anymore in our program? Because they were at one point accepted. Um, and this really goes to this manufacturing process. Um, these materials are not being used by manufacturers in our area. So again, those number three through number seven um, products, that goes to um, some of the tubs. We used to accept what we categorized as dairy tubs. So something that was a cream cheese container or a cottage cheese container or a butter tub. A lot of those dairy products, um, the plastic containers they come in are a number five plastic, um, which is unfortunately right now, we just don't have anybody to sell that material to. Um, so without having a manufacturer that's buying and using that product, um, we just can't, um, we can't recycle it in our area. And so it is, we are not accepting it in our program. Because again, we only want to accept materials that we know are actually being recycled. Um, so if the material isn't used for new products, 
can't be recycled. Um, but then also there can be some barriers regarding just the manufacturing equipment that's needed to process the material. So um, aluminum foil is an interesting example, something we absolutely used to accept. Um, but we have found that uh, the, in the manufacturing process of melting down aluminum, aluminum foil doesn't have enough aluminum in it and it just burns up and essentially is, is incinerated, um, which those manufacturers, they don't want that material. They want things like aluminum cans. Those are great, but the aluminum foil, unfortunately, is just doing something different in that manufacturing process and isn't actually being recycled. And then with these plastic clamshell containers, this is, I know it, it gets really confusing with all these different plastics, but um, you know, again, the big reason for, for these plastic clamshell containers is again, this manufacturing equipment and how this material is processed. So this is a number one type plastic, which is highly recyclable, um, but it's, which is the same type of plastic as for example, a plastic soda bottle. However, a plastic soda bottle and a plastic berry produce container like this one, they require completely different equipment to process it for recycling. Um, so uh, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that have the equipment for soda bottles. That's something that's been developed in the industry for a long time. Whereas these produce containers are, are newer really in terms of a uh, type of product and they're just made differently than soda bottles are. Even though they're made from the same type of plastic, they have different chemicals in them and different additives and they're just made in a different way that just requires a whole different process and a different set of equipment that manufacturers don't necessarily have in our region. In fact, there's only a handful of places that um, can take this material and actually recycle it here in the United States. Um, and most of those are really only in regions um, that access places like California um, naturally and some of those places on the West Coast. So um, if they don't have the right equipment, then again, it just can't be recyclable um, or recycled. All right, so I feel like we've, I've uh, hit a little bit on the doom and gloom part of recycling. So I wanna get out of that because um, we're, not, we're sharing this presentation not to make it more confusing, but to help you focus on the materials really that can be recycled rather than focusing on, well, I can't recycle this, I can't recycle that. Focus on the materials that you absolutely can recycle because recycling is absolutely essential. It's not only essential for helping us reduce our waste, um, but it's also the products that are recycled. They're part of an industry and an economy that is um, absolutely essential, which is why I showed the toilet paper because we all know right now in these very strange times how uh, essential toilet paper is and toilet paper a lot of it's made from a lot of recycled paper um, so we need to keep recycling uh, as long as we're recycling the right materials as more manufacturers start recycling some of these other materials we can include them in our program um, but focus on what we do accept recycle those materials feel very good about it because it's really important to support um, the, the material demand that's, that's required by recycling. Um, so recycling is essential, it's good, it's just important that we do it right. So to help you do it right, we not only had this presentation, but we've also got um, a lot of materials on our website, um, at our drop-off locations. We've just put together a lot of materials to help you. So on our website, there's some informational posters that you can download. We have those in four different languages. Um, if you wanna share those or print those off, We've updated our signs at our drop-off locations. Those are also in all four different, um, or in four different languages, as well as our curbside cart decals. Um, if you're interested in getting a curbside cart, a new curbside cart sticker, if you go to recycle.nashville.gov, um, there is a spot where you can request a new sticker. Um, and then we also have this how to recycle right guide that is a little bit more extensive than what I've shared with you all today. Um, so this guide, again, you'll have this link when I send out um, a follow-up email to this presentation. Um, so this guide is downloadable straight from our website at recycle.nashville.gov. And it just goes into a little bit more detailed information. Um, so you've got your curbside rules, you've got your drop-off rules, and these are all designed so that you can easily print them out and uh, make posters out of them. We've got our accepted materials. We go into a little bit more detail on each of, each of these different categories of accepted materials, giving you some top tips, 
about those materials, like leaving out aerosol cans, um, those are actually very dangerous. And our contractor has told us that um, if a manufacturer gets a bale of aluminum that has an aerosol can in it, they might reject that entire bale. So it's really important that you keep those out. That's a new one um, that we've included. Plastic, um, again, just some no takeout containers. Um, some extra details on all of these different materials. A few extra top tips. Um, one that we didn't go over, labels are not a problem on jars and containers and cans, so don't worry about those labels. This goes also into our, um, a little bit more into our OOPS program, gives you some details on that. Um, and then most importantly, I think what has been helpful for a lot of folks has been this more extensive list of materials. So we list more specific materials, whether or not you can recycle it. If you can't recycle it, we tell you why. And then uh, if you can't recycle it, we tell you what you can do with it, what other options there are. Trash might be the only option, but in some cases you can donate it, in some cases you can compost it, or in some cases there's other recycling programs outside of our traditional uh, curbside and drop-off recycling that you can take materials to. So we have a lot of materials here um, that, uh, again, a lot of information for you um, that's available on our website. And again, I'll share a link to that for all of you. So all of these materials are out there for you to help um, share about how to recycle right. Um, we do have our OOPS uh, cart tagging program. So if you're a curbside customer and receive one of these OOPS tags, just make sure that you look very closely at all the different items. Um, whether So what we do with that audit program, we do a quick spot check um, and see what uh, if there's any materials that shouldn't be in there. And then we'll mark those on this OOPS tag and stick that on your cart. And then you are required to remove all of those items before we'll come back and pick it up. Um, it's just important to note that since we only do a spot check, um, you need to make sure that there are no items, whether we saw them or not, that can't be recycled in that cart. So look at every single thing, even if we didn't mark it um, as something we saw. If you pull out some items and it reveals something else, um, so say you have a bunch of plastic bags on top, that's all we saw, so we marked the plastic bags. You pull out the plastic bags and you've got some glass bottles in there. Make sure to get those glass bottles, everything out that can't be recycled. Otherwise, we will pull your recycling cart. And that's certainly not the thing we want to do. This is just another way to help educate you at your recycling cart. Um, and with that, we are going to jump into our quiz. This is a chance to win a Get Rowdy Recycle t-shirt. So we are going to go back to our Menti quiz. Oops. Um, oops, sorry about that. There we go. All right. So go ahead and log into your Menti. We've got some people joining us. I'll give you just another second to get people joined in. This is a chance to win a Get Rowdy Recycle t-shirt. So that's menti.com. And again, the code is 678482. Nine. All right, I think we've got our folks. All right, so the faster you answer, the more points you get. So which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? So cannot be in your curbside cart. Is it a plastic cream cheese tub, a peanut butter jar, or the shampoo bottle? Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? You've got one second. All right. Okay. The correct answer, the plastic cream cheese tub. That's absolutely right. So this whole quiz is going to be items that you cannot recycle. Let's see in your curbside carts. Let's see who's in the lead. Looks like Caitlin is in the lead. All right. We've got a few more questions to go. So this is, again, the faster you answer, the more points you get. Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? Is it? A newspaper? Is it a juice carton or is it the shredded paper? Which of these items cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? You've got five seconds. Everyone's voted. Awesome. Shredded paper, absolutely. That juice carton is accepted in our program, but shredded paper we do ask that you keep out. So nice job on that. All right, let's see who's in the lead. It looks very close. 
Oh, we've got some movement, but Caitlin is still in the lead. Still got a few questions, so you've got time. Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? Is it toilet paper tube, greasy pizza box, or a cereal box? Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? Everyone's voted. Oh, awesome. Yes, everybody got it right. The greasy pizza box is not accepted. All right, let's see where we're at. Oh, it's still very close. Caitlin is still in the lead, but Christina has bumped up. All right, I believe this is our last question. Answer as fast as you can. Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? Is it a soda can, a tuna can, or an aluminum baking pan? Which should you not put in your curbside cart? You've got five seconds. Everyone's voted, ah, and everyone's right. Excellent. It is the aluminum baking pan. You can take that to our convenience center for scrap metal, but do not put it in your curbside cart. Let's see if we've changed in our leader. Oh, Caitlin in the lead and you have won a Get Rowdy Recycle t-shirt. That is awesome. Congratulations. All you need to do, if you can go and navigate to the Q&A, um, it'll be at the bottom of your screen. Use the Q&A function to let us know that uh, who you are and we will make sure to pull your email address and we'll shoot you an email to uh, um, get you your t-shirt. So just let us know, give us a holler in the Q&A. Caitlin, nice job. All right, so just a couple other things before we get to questions. I can't say it enough, just because we don't recycle it in our program, it doesn't necessarily mean that some of these items can't be recycled. Our convenience centers take mattresses, tires, electronic car um, electronics, carpet. Um, we also collect household hazardous waste. So there are other options for a lot of these materials. Um, there are plastic bag drop-offs. Um, if you are wanting to know locations or what you can, um, what types of plastic film is accepted in those programs. If you check out plasticfilmrecycling.org, they have all of that information, everything that you want to know about recycling plastic bags and other plastic film. Um, so there's those kinds of drop-offs. There's also styrofoam drop-offs at um, Publix, um, packing foam drop-off. I know there's one location out in Laverne. All that information is on our website at recycle.nashville.gov. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of other options outside of our program. Um, and then I'll just breeze through this really quickly. I, we often get a lot of folks that get a little overwhelmed with, um, especially with plastic recycling and the fact that so little can be recycled. Um, so if you're looking for ways to do more beyond um, just making sure that you're recycling right at home, you know, supporting zero waste legislation, there's a, a lot of it out there right now. Um, at the federal level and at the state level, there is um, a plastic ban on grocery bags that's going through the state process. Um, so looking in and supporting those, reaching out to elected officials about zero waste legislation to support that. Um, of course, there's also the power of your purchase. Um, buying from sustainably minded companies, buying recycled, um, those kinds of things really help to to just say on a larger scale that you know you care about these these issues and, and reducing waste. Um, and then get involved. There's a lot of ways to get involved. Breakfreefromplastic.org is a big one right now, but there's a lot of different ways um, that you can get involved. We've got our Facebook group, Get Rowdy Recycle Right Nashville. So if you wanna meet with like-minded people, um, that's another way to get involved and, and learn more as well. So with that, the last thing I'll say, um, when in doubt, throw it out, stick to those accepted materials that we talked about, um, and don't bag your materials, don't let them get wet, and make sure that um, you're leaving all that weird stuff out, just the basics, and when in doubt, throw it out. So with that, I will open it up, um, Sharon, if we have any questions. Jan, as always, we have some great questions. Uh, first question is, uh, is there any information on our website on where people could take plastic bags, styrofoam, or shredded paper? So shredded paper, um, we do have information on our website at recycle.nashville.gov. We do have some information on other recycling options that links to um, 
uh, information on plastic bag recycling as well as styrofoam recycling. Um, I will double check. I know um, and make sure that we've also included shredded paper as I'm not sure that we've necessarily included that, but you can take shredded paper to a compost um, drop off site. Um, otherwise, there are some um, area businesses that do um, take some shredded paper, um, but we can definitely make sure that we have that information on our website. Good deal. All right. What about uh, envelopes that have that godforsaken bubble wrap inside? Now, that godforsaken bit was added by me. Uh, so the, unfortunately, um, that bubble wrap packaging, those bubble envelopes, those are not recyclable. However, I, I highly re recommend either keeping them because you never know when you're going to need to be able to mail something there. There's been plenty of times that I actually wish I had one so that I could mail, um, something that needed a little cushion, or you can take them to, um, places like Turnip Green Creative Reuse. I know they have a whole bunch of them because people do use those and they can be reused. Um, but unfortunately, they can't be recycled. So if you don't reuse them, then they are just trash. All right, Jen, where do we put brown paper bags at the recycling drop-off site? Brown paper bags. So the the best rule of thumb, that's a, a great question. I actually forgot to mention it earlier. Um, at the recycling drop-off site, it's best to put corrugated cardboard, like cardboard boxes, all that goes in the cardboard bin. Everything else can go that's a, a paper or you're not quite sure if it's cardboard or paper. You can put that in the car or in the paper bin. All right, very good. Um, wondering about black takeout containers and the many different numbers on other plastic food containers. Yes, so takeout containers we we don't accept. Um, it's really just it's plastic bottles, plastic jars, and plastic jugs. So any of those other plastic items, plastic containers, um, we don't accept. Um, unfortunately, those materials they're just not being used by manufacturers to make new things. And with um, takeout, especially, it's often got food residue and and not necessarily the cleanest either. So. Um, those things, just keep them out. Um, try If you can, try your best not to get them or um, throw them in the trash. Very good. This is my favorite question. What about number one, plastic containers that are not jugs, bottles, or jars, such as a mushroom container? Ah, yes. The um, I was very disappointed when the mushrooms I get went from a cardboard container to a plastic container. It was very disappointing. Um, but unfortunately, those, um, even though number one, um, plastic is a, is a highly recyclable plastic, that particular material um, just is not something that manufacturers have the equipment to process here. They're not purchasing it. They're not using it. So if it's not a bottle, jar, or jug, it's not getting recycled. So we ask that you keep that out of our program. Um, look at, you know, you can go to the farmer's market. I know I try to do that sometimes. Otherwise, um, just put it in the trash. Excellent. All right, here's um, another really good one that um, we've, we've kind of talked about before. So earlier you said that things have to be, you know, like bigger than two inches square to kind of make it through the process. So what about pieces of paper that might be two inches or what about post-it notes that might be close to that? I have some post-it notes here on my desk and I am measuring them and they are a little bigger than two inches. What happens to those? Uh, so uh, post-it notes, I would say are not a problem, partially because that little bit of stickiness will allow them to stick to other pieces of paper. So I usually try to stick them to another piece of paper um, and that will kind of help them go through the process. Um, you know, it's, it's not a hard and fast rule, but if, it, if a piece of paper is just starting to get too small, it's starting to get too kind of shredded, then it's not going to make it through that process. So um, use it as a rule of thumb. It doesn't have to be perfect at that two inches, but definitely try to keep some of that smaller stuff out. You can look at composting it, um, you know, is always a good option, um, but just making sure that you're not putting a bunch of, of small paper. The shredded paper is really where it gets to be a really big problem. Yeah, that's true. You know, we, uh, you said that we could put um, cartons in uh, the recycling bin. Is it necessary to, to sort of cut out the little plastic spout? 
It's uh, it's not necessarily you don't have to do it. Um, I will say the those paper cartons, they are going to a paper mill. So the plastic material is likely not being recycled through that process. The paper part is really what they're after. Um, so it, it's up to you. But um, as far as, as we know from our contractor, those plastic parts, that's not a problem at all to leave it on there. All right, very good. And what about, and Jen and I have talked about this a lot, what about receipt paper? Ah, receipt paper. Uh, that is a very, very good question. Um, so uh, receipt paper, in a short answer, there's not necessarily, it's not something that is uh, going to cause a problem if it's put in your recycling bin, but thermal paper, um, there is some chemicals in thermal paper that's just not ideal for recycling. So kind of on a, you know, just for the, the safety of the end product that's coming from those paper products that are made from recycled material, that thermal receipt paper, we actually um, ask that you keep it out. It's got uh, what is it, BPAs and just some other chemicals in there that you don't really want. Um, so how do you tell if something is thermal paper? Um, you'll start to learn very quickly which retailers and which places you go use as thermal paper. Most grocery stores, um, banks, um, a lot of big box stores will use thermal paper. Um, the easiest way to tell is um, if you get it near some heat, whether that's a, a lighter or um, you know, a light bulb, something like that, um, it'll turn black. You can also scratch it with um, like a coin or something if it starts to discolor. Um, that's how you can tell that it's thermal paper. But other receipt paper is just fine. All right, Jen, we have a great question that came through and it came from uh, Elizabeth Thompson. Elizabeth, I am going to click on the button to allow you to talk. I would really like to hear the backstory behind your husband, and pizza, if you are willing. I'm going to, I have clicked the button where you can speak if you want to, it is totally up to you. But Jen, the question was, my husband says a little pizza grease or debris is okay. Do I tell him it's not? Elizabeth, what did, what's the story here? He will look at a pizza box with just a little cheese, a little bit of cheese or a little grease stuck on it. He said, that's okay. That's just a little, that's okay. And I want to be able to tell him no, and I need your backup. And so have you ever told him no before? Yeah, and he says, oh, this is not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's our life. <laughs> you are a saint, Jen. What is the answer? Is uh, uh, Elizabeth right or is her husband right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> For our program and for our guidelines, uh, you are absolutely right and your husband is wrong. We don't Yay. want any Woo! of that. Um, it really comes down to there just is, uh, there's just too much concern with that grease getting on other, that little tiny grease piece, you know, grease expands, it gets bigger and then it gets on other things and gets on the paper. And the really big concern for us is that that grease can get onto paper and what might be a little bit on your pizza box well when you start combining that with everybody's little bit of grease it becomes a lot of grease so we ask please just cut that little tiny piece of grease out um compost it tear off the clean part and recycle that but keep that greasy bit out well, and that's a good job for him he can tear off the greasy part that's a good absolutely <laughs> and uh uh, Elizabeth, for asking my favorite, favorite question of the day. We are going to be adding you to our free t-shirt list and contacting you here shortly. That, <laughs> that is a, you, next time he talk, complains about the pizza box, take it and whack him on the head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen, that is the, uh, the end of our questions. Well, wonderful. Um, well, I, again, I really appreciate everybody being on this call today to learn a little bit more about how to recycle right. Um, I, you know, when in doubt, just remember, throw it out. If you do have questions, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is here. I'll also be sending that out by email um, in a follow-up that's going to include a PDF, some good links for you, as well as a recording of this webinar so that you can share it with your friends and family or you know, watch it as much as you like. Um, and with that, um, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and uh, happy recycling. Thanks for joining us, everyone.